How did some concubines manage to enter the Sultan's bed and stay there for a long time? Islam forbids the taking of Muslim women as captives and holding them as concubines, therefore, the Sultan's harem was renewed with women from Ukraine, Greece, Albania, Bosnia, Georgia, and Circassia. These concubines were not purchased in markets. The most beautiful concubines were gifted to the Sultan by the Crimean kings and prominent Ottoman figures who sought to gain his favor. First, the new arrivals had to undergo a thorough medical examination. The most important stage was the chastity test, conducted by the midwives from the Sultan's harem. Virginity was considered the primary attribute of a concubine. Of course, appearance was also important. He preferred girls with a feminine and proportionate body. Roxolana, who became a favorite of Suleiman the Magnificent, was somewhat slender. It was only at the age of 45 that Roxolana gained some extra weight. A Genoese wrote that when he visited the Top Copy Palace in 1550, Roxolana was a plump but beautiful woman, looking young for her age. It was also important to protect the Sultan from infectious diseases. Natural methods were used to test potential concubines. At night, the concubines were monitored to detect mental health issues. Snoring and talking in one's sleep were considered signs of mental illness. From time to time, the Sultan would organize a party in the harem. The concubines were carefully chosen by the valid Sultan, who was in charge of the harem. The girl who impressed the ruler would receive a silk handkerchief from him. This was a sign of her losing her virginity that night. The lucky girl was first taken to the bathhouse. Incense was used to soften her skin and hair. Then, accompanied by singing and dancing, she was led along the golden path, a corridor connecting the harem to the sultan's private chambers. Dressed in luxurious garments and perfumed, the chosen girl entered the room alone and had to kiss the sultan's robe as a sign of greeting. The pregnant girl would be sent to prepare for childbirth at the old palace in Bayezid Square in Istanbul. She was given a salary and assigned maidservants. If she gave birth to a son, she would no longer have the right to be intimate with the Sultan but would instead raise his heir. If she gave birth to a daughter, she could once again share the Sultan's bed. But Harem Roxolana changed these rules. Since 1521, she gave birth to a son named Mehmed, a daughter named Myrima, and four other children. Throughout this time, the Ukrainian woman did not leave the Sultan's chamber. They were married only in 1530. From then on, every concubine had the opportunity to obtain the title of Sultana, which was awarded in the 16th century to the Sultan's wives, daughters, and sisters. If a concubine did not have an intimate relationship with the Sultan, she would be freed from slavery after eight years and married off. It was considered an honor for government officials to marry an educated and virtuous foreign woman who had been raised in the Sultan's palace. Many future Sultans were raised in confinement within the palace, always living in fear of being killed and often suffering from psychological trauma. According to some unconfirmed accounts, Mehmed III and his son Ahmed I beat their concubines to death. One of the girls refused to allow the Sultan to go on a campaign, while another killed the Sultan's favorite concubine out of jealousy.